Manus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Manus. Yeah. It's just a Jesus. Martial arts. Yeah. My man B Hop got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And uh, let's, let's do it, Ronda. Let's hit me up. You see what they're doing? That's got face for video. That's got face for video. Martial arts. Chat. Hello and welcome to the Martial Arts Chat Podcast and on this episode we'll be predicting UFC 218 with the help of our panel and of course with your fan questions and comments. Thank you to everyone who got in touch and remember you can still hit me up during this live stream at facebook.com forward slash martial arts chat or follow us on twitter at martial arts chat. Before I introduce tonight's panel, a few plugs from our sponsors. If you're wanting to get into shape, get back into shape, or just make some room for the Christmas pudding that's round the corner, go to beastgear.co.uk and use the coupon code Martial Arts Chat. You can save 15% off your purchases there. They've got coarse slider straps, barbell pads, complete strength and conditioning programs to suit your needs. And we're also sponsored by A1 Fight Gear. Go to a1fightgear.co.uk and they use the latest cutting-edge boxing gloves for professional and amateur fighters, gym enthusiasts and kickboxers. So local and national gyms in the UK, do yourselves a favour and check out a1fightgear.co.uk. So, on to tonight's panel, we have returning to the show, I call him Stato, because the guy's statistical analysis just blows my mind every single time. He's the man, the myth, the legend... It's Kobe from Kobe's Corner. Kobe, how you doing, mate? I'm doing great. Looking forward to tapping into the Cohen main event for UFC 218. Going down in Detroit, Michigan, which is right around the corner for me. I'm the border city to Detroit in Windsor, so right in my homeland. Excellent stuff, mate. And then new to the panel, I can't wait to hear his thoughts tonight. Please welcome G from the MMA show. G, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thank you, John. Thank you for inviting me on your show, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully impart some uh, some uh, martial arts knowledge. So, yeah, thank you for that. Can't wait for it, mate. And finally, my man, no doubt, has uh, the chill beer at hand and the hot, hot sun. Whilst I sit here, freeze my ass off in Scotland <laughs> with a chilled wine for comfort. He's the greatest thing coming out of Lubbock, Texas. He's the co-host of the main event. It's Mr. Kevin Jones. Kev, how are you, sir? You know I'm doing great. It's Sunday. I'm actually 115 miles south, my hometown of Midland, Texas today, and uh, it's 73 degrees. The sun's just uh, beating right down on me. It's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking, you know, 150 miles, that would be from coast to coast up there in Scotland, I imagine, wouldn't it? That's probably, yeah, that, that's, as, that's as big as it gets for us up here. I mean, that's it. Exactly, mate. <laughs> well, guys, let's get into this uh, UFC 218. And we've been looking, like we said, uh, closely at the main and co-main for this one. And, and later I'll give some of my honourable mentions. Um, but we'll start with uh, things in the heavyweight division. Um, Francis Ngannou versus the Ream. And I'll start with Mr Kevin Jones on this one because, Kev, the reason I want to come to you first is it was around sort of this time last year. Uh, I think it was around the year awards show, actually, where you claimed that Ngannou could be the heavyweight champion within two years and a victory over over him. That, that would surely put him in the title picture. Obviously, that's easier said than done, but what's your thoughts and your predictions going into this fight, sir? Well, it's the biggest test of his career. You know, I think it's a, uh, I think it's an interesting matchup for sure because Alistair over in the way he's been fighting now, he's really picking his shots very well, not uh, taking the chance of gassing himself out. His, his output's way down. He's being way more precise. And a guy like Nagano with the combinations that he has, it's going to be very interesting to see if he can do it over due, due to Overeem what he's done to every other guy I've seen him fight yeah. and so I, I think that's the most interesting part of it I mean the hugest test of Nagano's career I'm glad you brought up me predicting and you know Alistair Overeem I think is also I mean, you got a guy with close to 55 I think he has 49 fights he had him on what before or something like that he's fighting a guy with Nagano who has like 11 fights maybe that, that's like the crazy world. And I always tell them, like, you want to look at an interview record if you're a boxing fan and you're just getting into it. Pretty much double the record. So, you know, if we did that, said, you know, we got a lot of big moves and finishes. He got about 20 minutes. You know, he got about 20 minutes. And, uh, but then you think it got like most over him. All the kickbacks and fights he had, too. I was just basically. It's. 
Oh, okay, Kev, mate, I'm losing you. I'm losing you. You're breaking up real bad, mate. I don't know if you can hear me, my friend. Um, whatever you were before, <laughs> go to there. <laughs> I may have to dial Kev back out and get him back in. Um, but whilst I do that, uh, let's move on with Kobe's opinion on this. Kobe, you've got two big heavy hitters. Overeem obviously has the more experience and the tools, but I think what Kev was trying to allude to there is um, the Reem's now in this uh, stage in his career where he's turning his back and running a lot uh, when the going gets tough. But um, I don't know if that, that plays a factor in this, but how, how do you see this one going down, mate? In terms of picking a winner, you, you got to think it's a real coin flip, mainly because they're heavyweights. These are four-ounce gloves. What we know historically about this division is one punch can change the outcome of any fight. And this isn't just one punch. This is Francis Ngannou, who recently had his punch measured and is definitively the hardest puncher in the division. And he'll throw a five-piece at you, one after the other. Nasty combinations, nasty hands, tons of power. But let's examine the run a little closer, okay? Five and oh. And I'm going to talk about the the train, not be, the hype train, not being derailed. Not being derailed because I do believe this man has the tools, but potentially coming to a stop. If you go back to the Curtis Blades fight, Francis Ngannou was taken down twice. Curtis Blades found a way to absorb some of that power. The next fight, I forget the dude's name. I apologize, the, the white guy, uh, big dude. He That was a very <laughs> poor stoppage. Very poor. Hylovich, I think it was his name. Very poor stoppage, in my opinion. Then he gets the, the ghost of Andre Orlovsky, who got clipped behind the ear. I mean, if I threw an overhand back there, he'd, he'd probably be sleeping. <laughs> and again, I'm not criticizing or, or taking this apart like it doesn't mean, like his run hasn't meant anything, but sure. there's the question marks. Alistair Overeem, when Francis Ngannou's toes first touched the mat in 2013, that's when he started training. Overeem had over 40 fights. He's a K1 World Grand Prix champion. He's held heavyweight titles in multiple organizations or titles in multiple organizations. There is a major, major experience mismatch here. Sure, furthermore, sure. furthermore, Francis Ngannou has not has faced one southpaw in his career. He's never faced a left-hander in the UFC. Oh. And in the fight that I found where he faced a left-hander, he threw a switch kick or, a, a, sorry, pardon me, a, a kick to the body because the power side's open and he landed it. Go figure. But we haven't seen him fight a left-hander in the UFC. Not a world-class striker like Alistair Overeem. So I think experience could supersede the raw power of Francis Ngannou. Therefore, I'm going to pick Alistair Overeem. But I wouldn't be shocked if he turns the lights out on the uh, the Netherlands. Uh, Alistair Overeem, who's the number one contender right now. I mean, this is a coin flip. But I'm taking Overeem. I'm taking experience over the raw power in the youngster in Francis Ngannou. Fair play, mate. G, what about you? As I mentioned, you know, the winner of this fight essentially is in the title contendership. But what's your predictions in this uh, heavyweight contest, sir? Yeah, I agree with uh, Kobe that Overeem brings, obviously, a lot of experience. I think about 58, 60 fights from K1 kickboxing to, to strike force champion. So he's he's definitely got that legendary status and it's, and it's well-deserved because of uh, what he's been through. And done, but I think this is a classic case of a rising star, as in Francis. Yes. And over him, I feel he's he's over the hill and he's on the way down. So we've got a, a young lion, extremely powerful. I mean, he demonstrated that when he um, did the uh, the Kimura to uh, the guy Hamilton, and that Kimura was from the I think it was from the bottom position. Uh, but it was an incredible feat of strength uh, that he actually pulled that Kimura from that particular angle. Yeah. So I, I think uh, Nogano has has certainly proven certain things. As Kobe said, this is the biggest test because of Overeem's experience and kickboxing striking skills. But my prediction is I'm going to go for the rising star. I'm going for Francis. By a finish. By a finish, <laughs> well said, mate. Okay, TKO. Okay. We'll say, I think let's... We, we, we would put point one more thing out, though, before we continue. Sure. Alistair Overeem's last victory was Verdum. I mean, that's one of the greatest heavyweights ever. So, yes, he's 37. He's found found a, uh, a new home for himself at Jackson Winklejohn, but he, he just beat arguably one of the, the greatest heavyweight ever. So I think that's an important fact coming off a victory over a guy like 
for that Mikey was, Overdue. That was quite a controversial win, I think, as well. Yeah. Sure, and not once but twice, right? Uh, that was, uh, I believe, that was. Oh no, tell a lie. That would have been the, that the third match up with uh, Verdum and and Overeem. Um, you guys may be a bit clue me up, but yeah, I mean, he holds he holds strings of victories over over names. Uh, you know, dating way back, like you said, a, a, a fifty fight uh, MMA career. He's got all the tools and all the experience, but I think the biggest factor going into this fight for me, guys, is the chin. The chin is clearly gone on Overeem, and this is why you see him turning his back and running. And uh, I just think I just don't think you can go toe to toe with a guy, um, kind of like you were saying, G, the, the young up and comer in the in the powerhouse that is Francis Ngannou. But it's going to make for an electrifying fight, that's for sure. Guys, let's move on to what would be the cool, excuse me, to the main event. And uh, obviously, it was it was supposed to be Frankie Edgar in this one. Um, he is uh, he's he's out with injury and, and up steps Jose Aldo with his chance to claim back the title. Off a man who took it from him, a nice little story going into it. Um, so, G, I'll start with you this time. G, and who, in your opinion, is walking out at this one as the undisputed featherweight champion? I'm going to go for uh, for Holloway um, for two two main reasons. Um, I think, as you said, Frankie Ed- Edgar was uh, was on the card and he got injured, I think, two, three weeks ago. Yep. So, what was Aldo doing before that? He's had a two or three week training camp that could work in his favor we saw uh, last year bisping against rockhold when bisping was filming the governor film and he had two weeks notice when uh, chris weidman hurt his neck and obviously became champion then but i reckon the short notice for aldo is not going to work in his favor and i'm going to say that i think aldo since his wce days when he came over to the ufc I, I think he's been on the decline. Now, I'm going to qualify that before people say, hey, Aldo on the decline. <laughs> when you look at his uh, time in the WE, WEC, he was he was devastating. He was brutal. He had flying knees over uh, Swanson. He, he nearly kicked Faber's legs off. Sure. And in the UFC, he's, he's had a couple of finishes. I think Mendes a knee and uh, someone else. But most of his... Uh, wins as obviously he was a champion for five or six years most of the wins have been by decision i think he lost an edge uh, maybe the competition was better that's always going to be a a factor you know you you meet better quality guys they have better defenses etc etc uh, but and i think aldo's motivation now since mcgregor a year and a half ago he's i think he was going for a boxing license i heard read somewhere and um, you know he's got a burger joint in brazil so I think his motivation is when the going gets tough, he, it's not going to be there. And we saw in the in the last fight, he I think the first and second round, he was picking off um, Holloway, but uh, whether it was fat- slight fatigue, uh, cardio, or I think Holloway caught him with a couple of good shots and then ended up on the floor, and the fight was over. So uh, and Holloway, you know, he's he's only twenty five, twenty six. He's uh, he's so coming young, to his yeah. peak. Yeah, yeah, we forget that because he's been around a while. I think he was 19 when he first fought, yes. and he fought McGregor four years ago, three years ago, one of his McGregor's first fights. That's right. And that went that went to decision, so he, you know he gave a good account of himself there. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go for for Holloway. But uh, if Aldo does it, it'd be good for him to come back. But I just can't see his motivation being there. Yeah, I've I've got to concur with that man. It's, it's especially after I was saying this on Twitter today that um, having rewatched the first fight uh, the other day there, I forgot the fact that he was clowning Aldo and uh, and got Aldo down and held him down. You know that was something that everybody has said that you can't do it to Jose Aldo. You know he pops right back up and and uh, he yeah. finished him on the ground and that was um, that was just a, such a huge factor, especially with um, with the first match not being that you know it's fresh in the mind. It's not that long ago, so. Uh, man, it's it's going to be tough for, for Aldo to try and wrestle that title back for sure. I think we might have Kev back. Kevin, can you hear me, mate? Uh, there he is. There he is. You got me? We got you, mate. We got you. We finally got you back. Well, uh, well let's uh, get your thoughts um, on, uh, firstly, the, the heavyweight uh, title picture because we kind of lost you there. And then if you can go on to uh, Hall- uh, Holloway and Aldo for us, sir. I think that fight, the heavyweight fight is a coin toss fight man i mean it's not it's kind of like um you know we were talking about the 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 fight the box match was last night you know it's uh or i mean even the bit you can put it on the bisping fight i mean this stuff that looks competitive and then ends up being not competitive it could go that way in ghana's favor 
or at, over him to catch him with a punch. I mean, anything could happen in this fight. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm going to have to put a burden, you know i got to pick Naganu, right? Sure. And I guess I'll leave it at that, man. It's it's not something I would bet on. As far as uh, Jose Aldo versus Holloway, just reiterate what, what I'm sure everybody was saying is, this has already happened once. Aldo was a great champion. All great champ. Show me a great champion in uh, MMA that didn't fall off at some point towards the end of their career. Yes. And that's what I think we've seen happen to Jose Aldo or Jose Aldo. And uh, I don't think he gets it done, man. I, you know, whenever you get beat the way he got beat by somebody, it's never a good idea to turn right back around and get in that rematch. Um, you know, I know that's what the fighter wants to do. It's not in his best interest to do so the majority of the time because if you just got beat by the guy, he's going to beat him again and he'd probably make quicker work of him and it was pretty quick work last time. That, that, that's, that's for sure. Uh, just to, um, kind of uh, on the back of what you said there about you know the quick turnaround, I think um, had he been offered any other fight this this quickly around, he would have probably declined. But the fact that it's a, a chance to you know quickly get the one back on the guy who took the title from you, that's probably too much of an allure for for Aldo, right? Oh yeah, I'm there. there. I mean, if I was, if I was handling the fighter then I would not like that. I would not like this fight at this moment for, for him. I think you got to build his confidence up a little bit. But, of course, the UFC, I mean, Jose Aldo's never been that marketable for whatever reason. I've always loved watching the guy fight. But he doesn't pull in the casual fans. And this is the most profitable match that the UFC can put him in at this moment. And, uh, you know, they, they've, been, they've been giving us some good fights. These uh, last pay-per-views, this one's sacked. I'm still asking this morning on the show. Well, rank. I just and you know not thinking about it. Some other top it's a B plus. You have to look at B plus card. A plus, no doubt about it. It's gonna be a fun, fun night on December second. For sure, mate. And Kobe, finally, I'll come to you last. What's your predictions for this main event? Who's walking out the undisputed champion? I thought there were some great points made, and I, I will go with Holloway. But I, I would like to say this: there is something dangerous about Jose Aldo in this fight, and that is for the first time in a long time. He has nothing to lose. Uh, he finished seven out of the eight WAC fights, as the panel member pointed out. Gio made some great points on that. He hasn't really been – there hasn't been that much offense. A significant strike sitting at around uh, three landed per minute on average in the UFC. And like Kevin said, you know, I mean, this is just the, the fall of a great champion. This guy won for 10 straight years. He's one of the greatest of all time, mm-hmm. in my humble opinion. Uh, but I think it's sort of the end of the road for Jose Aldo. And if you go back to the first fight – you talk about Holloway clowning, although he did not switch stances once. Holloway fought the entire fight out of the orthodox stance. He constantly switches stances, uses his deep kick out of left uh, left stance. He he fought the orthodox for a reason. He was welcoming that leg kick. And the one that Jose Aldo landed, Holloway tagged him with a beautiful right-hand counter. And if you watch those explosions from Aldo and then you slow them down on fight pass... Aldo does not land many of those shots. The crowd goes ballistic every time he throws a punch. Well, really through that first explosion where there was maybe six strikes thrown with that jumping knee, he landed clean once. And Holloway would break and shimmy to the left or the right on the outside each time. So Jose Aldo couldn't plant and land those leg kicks. Holloway never stayed in the pocket. Those leg kicks weren't there to be thrown. Everyone's asking about that. Where's the leg kicks? Where's the leg kicks? If you go do the math, Jose Aldo hasn't used leg kicks in almost 10 years. You go back against Hominick, that was 2011. That was the last time he used them in volume. Then again with Lamas. But all of the rest of the fights, he threw or landed less than 10 leg kicks against the Korean Zombie. He threw two and landed one. So that hasn't been there for a lot of years. And that's the one thing everyone's calling for. And sure, if he employs them and can find a way to land them on Holloway, it could change or alter the outcome of the fight. But Max is not handing that stuff over. He's very, very smart. Once he decided to turn it on against Jose Aldo, it was over. It, it almost, in some ways, my mind, he was playing with them a little bit. He really was. And then when he decided to hit that switch, it was game over for Aldo. It's a very, very quick turnaround. Aldo's birth certificate might say he's 31, which doesn't sound that old to us. But the guy's been around since 19 fish and chips. And when he was healthy, he competed <laughs> all the time. Plus all the BJJ, right? The guy's, the guy's been doing combat sports all, for forever. Mm-hmm. So I had too many miles on the tires here for me. But last thing, he is a dangerous guy with nothing to lose. This is the end of his legacy. So if, if he can go out there and just fire and catch Holloway, sure. But 
I wouldn't I wouldn't put any money on it. I'm taking Holloway to defend here all day long. Wow, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Uh, guys, just some honourable mentions of the rest of the card. We've got Henry Cejudo and Sergio Pettis finally thrown down. Um, you would imagine if Pettis takes that one and he's next uh, for Mighty Mouse. Um, we've also got Charles Oliveira returning to lightweight to take on Paul Felder. Yeah, that should be a really interesting fight. But the one I'm looking forward to the most is Eddie Alvarez and Justin Gaethje. You got two guys mm. here who just they don't mind making it a war <laughs> of you know almost every single fight they're in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my usual and put the death nail on this uh, and say that it's going to be fight of the night. So that means it'll be as boring as Tyron Woodley Wonder Boy two probably. So there you go. That's my two cents on or, that. Or Damien Meyer Wonder Boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'm sure I've done. I've had a few death nails in my time, so uh, that'll be that one round. Um, but let's uh, let's move on to the final part of the Gage, show, guys. Gage, you smokes and put some money on it. You reckon it? Wait, what, what's the line on that, Kev? You'll know this. Yeah. I'm not in on it yet, man. I, I got drunk and made a bunch of bets and uh, lost. We lost. We, we got a little banking up to do after last weekend. Or the Shanghai bullshit <laughs> card. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, uh, I'll keep you updated on it. You can do that, mate. Uh, final part of the show, guys. Is, I need some, we're uh, we're going to answer fine questions and I'll remind the panel, <clears throat> excuse me, of the one rule we have on the show. And it's simply this you don't have to wait your turn, guys. The floor is yours, gentlemen. So if you're happy, we'll start with uh, we'll start with Facebook this week. Um, let's see. We've got Dennis Munro message to say, "Am I the only one who doesn't care for the Aldo rematch? I would have much rather seen Cub Swanson put in there." What do you guys think? Who Cub Swanson? I think he was supposed to fight Lamas. Ricardo uh, Lamas, Brian Ortega. Is, is that who it was? T City. I think you're right. Actually, yes, you're right. You're exactly right. That's who it is. It's it, it's this a money thing. I mean, just like I was saying earlier, the although this is the only marketable match they can really make for him right now, man. I mean, you know, I haven't really thought that out. Just saying that statement, but this is makes perfect sense to do this. That's why he's in there. Um, and and plus, I mean, the guy was champion for so long, and and even though he did lose to a brother. He looks like again, and this is a this is the most, most sense at the moment. And and it's uh, if you want to get in a fair, I haven't seen a Ferris wheel in uh, an MMA cage ever, but it's it's it is fair that he gets the uh, gets his agreement. Fair enough, mate. Yeah, I think it's um, I th- if I believe right that Holloway had already beat Swanson uh, not too long ago. I want to say that was part of his. Uh, run to get the title I'm sure he took out Swanson as well he had so many victories I've just lost count yeah I think Cub Swanson unfortunately suffers from uh, the lack of marketability syndrome right which has hit, hit the UFC in the last three or four five years um, since McGregor came on side uh, but yeah I think from a deserving point of view if that word means anything but yeah. uh, should have should have been Swanson but you could argue that um, Aldo never got his rematch when he lost to uh, to McGregor. Uh, you know, he ten years champion, blah, never lost, blah blah blah. Never got a rematch, so this may be some uh, some payback for that. But uh, just to go back on the point that Kobe made, a very good point about the kicks and how devastating, how people associate um, Aldo with as in in Britain we would say football kick, but football sure. kicks, but in, yes. in America they say soccer kicks. He, he's never really done that. And, and the one thing I'll never understand is why he never did it to McGregor because McGregor stands in a wide, almost karate stance and he's, he's a top heavy on his front leg, on his right leg as a southpaw and he never never got a chance to use the kicks. But that's that's another point anyway. But yeah, Cub, Cub Swanson would have been more deserving but maybe Aldo's getting a bit of, bit of a payback for not getting a rematch. It's a, it's a phrase one that... My, um, one of my uh, favourite... One of my favorite lines out of any real quick job, boys, Unforgiven before Clint Eastwood shoots this dude in the face with a shotgun. He tells him deserve has nothing to do with it. <laughs> and the deserve comment out there, I said, I've got to get this in here. Uh, deserve has nothing to do with it. I, t- I tell fans this all the time. Don't tell me about fair. Don't tell me about deserve. But, uh, yeah, man, my friend from across the pond over there reminded me about that. That's right. I mean, I can't think of many times where we've used that word deserve 
uh, you know, and, and realise that it really has no purpose or meaning, especially in this, um, I want to say, the new era of the UFC. It's, um, mm. I know uh, I was on Kobe's Corner, Kobe, we were talking about this, it's like Deserve's got nothing to do with it anymore, it's, um, it's different times we're living in and... Uh, it's just like I, I, get, I don't want to say I get sick of saying deserve, but it's like I, I hear what all you guys are saying. But when you're when you're dealing with this, um, it's, it's post Zufa era. It's it's not deserve anymore. It's money fights, and and that's all it seems to seems to count now. Anyway, let's move on. We've got Sophie Herbert. She uh, messaged well, to say, "I want to hear Kobe guy breakdown of Gaethje Alvarez. That fight is the real main event." So, Kobe, the floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, one of the beautiful things about this fight is that I got to run back Michael Johnson versus Justin Gagey and rewatch that fight just to sort of look at Justin Gagey's game and try to find some holes because I want to see how what what recourse the routes of victory Eddie Alvarez could here have here. Gagey after one fight landing over ten significant strikes per minute at almost sixty percent accuracy, absorbing nine point two nine. So these numbers obviously don't mean a lot in one fight, but what we know is that Justin Gagey is going to come forward, he's going to cover up when he needs to, and he's just going to chuck fucking bombs. He's going to try to break <laughs> you down. He's going to go upstairs first, and then he's going to work the kicks. There are some pitfalls to this style, and I don't want to say that it's him getting dropped or knocked out in this fight. The guy's got a fantastic chin. What that does for longevity on his career, we don't know. But Eddie Alvarez has an uncanny ability to make fights boring if he wants to. Let's go back to the Anthony Pettis fight. When he first got to the UFC, he was a little bit more conservative, not what we've seen in the Dustin Poirier fight. So if Eddie Alvarez can take that wrestling, which is very, very strong, still landing almost four takedowns per fight at almost 40% accuracy, defense takedowns at over 90%, if he can close that space, get inside, he doesn't even have to hit the takedown. He just has to threaten level change, get inside, clinch, dirty box, Great space again and give Gagey something to think about. If he can slow the fight down and take those that pressure away, I think he has a chance to win. As well, Gagey covers up. And if you throw looping hook punches or hooks around that guard, you can land. Sort of like in the fight with Rafael de Sanjos, where Eddie Alvarez threw a lead hook, came around with, I believe it was a right hand that caught Dos Angeles, which started the finish. So if Eddie Alvarez fights Justin Gagey's fight, he loses. He's been in tons of wars. He's been dropped a million times. I think Bisping's the king of, of uh, being knocked down in the UFC. But I, I'm going to tell you right now, Eddie Alvarez has been dropped on his butt more than once. But he'll get back up. That's not an issue. But I don't think he put, wants to put himself in that position against the undefeated Justin Gagey. If Eddie Alvarez can Im impose a game plan here and fight his fight, I think he has a chance to win. If he stands in the pocket and just tosses bombs back and forth, if he gets sucked into Justin Gagey's game, like Michael Johnson, it's le it's nights out for the underground king. Fair enough, mate. There you go. That's it. Uh, let's move on with John Danis, who messaged to say, USADA killed a lot of Brazilian fighters' careers. <laughs> Aldo is one of them. This is why he will never win back the title. That's not really a question, but thanks very much, mate. I'll... Oh, I'll take that one on board. Uh, let's move on. Kali Manwar messaged to say, UFC Hawaii. Guys, do you ever think that will happen? UFC in the beautiful island of Hawaii. There's, Absolutely. Um, yeah, you, as long as Max Holloway's uh, holding that strap, you got Nancy Medeiros, I think, is the one. You got some talent out there. There's some There's some, There's some. some names. And, I mean, it's a beautiful place. It's a, a market that they're cracking into with Holloway holding that strap. Why not? I don't think for a couple of First of all, a plane ticket to Hawaii is quite expensive, especially if you're getting it for fights on short notice, and there's always a chance that a fight will be canceled. I don't think you got a lot of people flying in to go see this uh, fight. I would love to see it go down to that stadium where uh, see Hawaii plays or Hawaii University, whatever they want to call the Rainbow Warriors out there. The um, And the, the other thing is, Hawaii is an extremely expensive place to live. The people that are there don't have a lot of expendable income. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of poor people in Hawaii, and I don't see them ponying up the type of money. Just whenever you know UFC came to Dallas and the amount that they were charging for these tickets, they were charging like it was uh, you know Canelo fighting down there. Right. And yeah. The I mean even with even with the heavyweight fight, I mean they well I mean they weren't charging quite as much as they did for the Canelo fight, but the uh, you're not going to get a lot of local people that have the type of money that UFC wants to spend to produce a show over there 
and to pack them in there. And I could be wrong, man. We just saw a card in Shanghai, China. So uh, Shanghai's a huge fucking city. It's my uh, knowledge of the deal. But anyway, that, that's my. I'm, I'm out on this deal. It would be it would be awesome to see, but I take on board your point. It was going to cost a lot of people a lot of money, but um, then again, you could say that about Vegas, I suppose, or and, and that's not just going to see the UFC. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have uh, some uh, exposable income just to throw in there on the craps table. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, let's move on to well, Twitter before biggest, we wrap up. To... What's that? Sorry, Kev, say again. I was just going to say the biggest difference between going to Vegas is there's a flight leaving a major any city in the, they got an airport has a flight leaving to Vegas at noon every day of the week. Right. So you know <laughs> it's still they're getting Hawaii. That's yeah. true. That's true. It's a long across half an ocean, John. No. That's it. It's a long swim home, mate. If you don't catch a flight for sure, and um, we'll finish up with <laughs> questions from Twitter. Look out there on that island. If shit <laughs> a lot of sharks. Uh, at Bahawishi. Be- Be- Two tweeted to say, Justin Gaethje is the only fighter who doesn't have to sell his fights. We know it's going to be a barn burner. Hashtag uh, 218. Thanks, mate. Let's get a- another question in there for the panel. Um, let's see. At Else for Elf, she tweeted to say, kind of what um, you guys were alluding to earlier, if Jose Aldo goes back to his leg-kicking game, he might stand a chance against Holloway. But I think that's his only chance. What do you guys think? So is the leg kicks making a difference? I think it will. Uh, it would make a difference, but I think Holloway's uh, probably too too durable for that, too smart for that, um, and and too too mobile. You know, he, he could switch stance. He could uh, he could find a way of uh, nullifying that, checking the kick. So uh, I think it, it could work, but uh, I don't think it would work on Holloway for in a significant amount of time. You know, over. Half a round, a round, two rounds. He may get, you know, a few seconds success out of it. But to change, would he be a game changer? I don't think so. Not against Holloway. Yeah, blame it. I'll make it short and sweet for you. Uh, I don't think it's for the waist kicks to uh, get back in the fight at all. Nothing at all for you, mate. Oh. I do. I think it would be. I mean, if you could lay these types of kicks and anyone that's done martial arts, even if you're wearing shin guards, when someone turns their hip over and and follows through, you I've eaten some I've sparred with some guys where I'd much rather be punched in the head than kicked in the leg. Now, like I talked about earlier, Max Holloway's movement is fantastic, and I expect to see him in the southpaw stance in this fight. If Aldo comes out balls to the wall and fights with nothing to lose, we could see him pitching these things early. The right-hand counter is always going to be there or a check left, check, uh, check left hook for Max Holloway. Should Jose Aldo land these kicks? Yes, they could be a huge factor in the fight. Will he land them? I think that's the million-dollar question. He's fell in love with his hands, and he's like I said, he's really gotten away from these things over, over the years. That's a great way to put it. He's fell in love with his hands, yeah. That, 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 uh, the way you phrased that there sort of... Um, when I was watching Kevin Gaslam and excuse me, Kelvin Gaslam and, and uh, Bisping the other night, here's a wrestler who has really taken the strike, and and uh, I, I'm not saying uh, Holloway's you know the, the same route or whatever, but yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful way to put it, mate. He's um, he's so flowy now in his striking that it, um, he's uh, I think he surpassed Jose Aldo. I may be proved wrong in this fight, but um, I really think that's where we're at now with uh, with Holloway and and uh, Jose Aldo. Well, there you have it, guys. UFC 218. That's this Saturday at the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. And I want to extend my thanks to our panel here this evening and uh, and let the guys get the plugs in. So, firstly, my thanks to Mr. Kevin Jones of the main event. Always a pleasure to have you on, mate. Let everyone know where they can check you out and check out the main event. You can listen to me live Sundays from 8 to 9 on... uh, That's AM, too. We're talking early, man. 8 to (laughs) 9 on... uh, on, uh, Locally on Double T 97.3, and then you can get on Double T 973.com. And uh, yeah, man, uh, the T is just the letter T. And uh, you can also get on the app. If you download the Double T 97.3 app, you can listen to the show whenever you want to. One hour out of your day will catch you up on everything that went on in the week and everything that's coming up in the week in the world of boxing and MMA. West Texas only live boxing and MMA show. There you have it. My thanks to G of the MMA show. Please, uh, sorry, a pleasure for your time, sir, but please uh, check out your stuff, listeners. Where can they do that, G? Where can they check out your show? Yeah, it's it's a monthly uh, monthly podcast. It's on Facebook. It's at, at Let's Talk MMA. 
um, and on Twitter, the Twitter handle is G the MMA Show. So, yeah, monthly podcast previewing, reviewing fights, and uh, talking all things martial arts. But thank you for having me on, John. Pleasure, sir. And finally, to Kobe, at Kobe's Corner. Let everyone know where they can check out your stuff, mate, and uh, spread the love. My blogs are at www.kobiescorner.com, but you can go to YouTube, simply type Kobe's Corner into your search engine. If you enjoy the work, please subscribe. We've got two big breakdowns up right now, Alistair Overeem versus Francis Ganyu, and Holloway versus Aldo, where I do some film study and go a lot more in-depth than I did today. I do all kinds of stuff on there, have some fun, love to interact. Like I said, if you enjoy it, subscribe, hit me up. I'd love to talk to you guys. Thanks so much, John, for having me, and thank you to the panel for being here. I'm John Boy McRoy, and if you like this podcast, then give us a rating on iTunes. Like us on Facebook.com forward slash martial arts chat, or if you want to hit me up on Twitter, I'm at martial arts chat there as well. We'll be back uh, next month covering the On Top Promotions Combat Cracker event that takes place on the 16th of December at the Onyx Centre in Linwood. And then we'll be wrapping things up with our very own Christmas show, the now infamous Christmas Awards show. So until then, I'll catch you next time on the Martial Arts Chat Podcast. Oh, and I'll be on Kobe's Corner next week as well. Be sure to check that out. Much love, peace, take care. Bye-bye.